to the cotton is as you use it and use it and use it, it starts to kind of wear and get narrow. Um, you can't wash it. Um, and so that's kind of the downside to the cotton. Rarely do I ever use this on a leg unless they're very mild and you're maybe only wrapping to the knee. I would never put this on the thigh because everything slides right down. Um, I tend to personally prefer, plus foam, sticks too, mm -hmm. um, the foam padding. Um, the old tiny foam that used to exist was about twice the size of the, the normal foam now. Um, the nice thing about foam is it actually has stretch to it, so you can conform better. It also can be washed in the washing machine and air dried, which you can't do with cotton over there because it will be done. <laughs> so um, I almost always wrap with um, foam, even on the arm. It's sometimes good because it helps to give um, more padding in the elbow crease because as people are wrapped and using their arms, they get irritated sometimes. Sometimes I'll even just cut a piece of foam and lay it in the middle um, if I'm using the cotton. Some people just can't stand the heat that comes with using the foam and you know we do use the cotton so it, it just varies. Um, bandages come in all sizes and shapes and you have to use what fits the person and so a lot of times on our evaluation we determine what those needs are. Um, Give you an idea. All the different sizes. Um, Um, rarely do I ever use this little one except for babies. We do wrap babies. So that's my baby wrap. You won't see that one that often. Um, this is a six centimeter. We tend to use this on the hand, especially with females. Um, if you were wrapping a male, you might use a six or an eight because they tend to have much larger hands. I don't have the 10, and when I say, when I talk about eight centimeters, six, we're talking about just the width across, so this is an eight centimeters across, you know, six centimeters. I don't have my 10 with me right now. Um, this is a 12 centimeter across. Um, most of the bandages, the six, the eight, the 10, the 12, they come in those widths, but they're five meters long, so this is your standard length of one roll. When you're doing legs to try to conserve on um, price and cost and not having multiple bandages, um, these are super nice to use. They, are, they come in the 10 centimeter and a 12 centimeter, but they are 10 meters long. So they are double rolls. So I can wrap a leg using one layer from the ankle to the thigh, depending on, you know, for the most part. Um, this for me being five, two and a half would probably still be too long, um, but I can never love it. <laughs> um, so those tend to be used more for legs. So you won't see me use those now, but for the arms. Um, we also have what we call finger wraps. Um, you can use finger wraps or I was looking to see, which I don't think I have one in here. Um, oh, I do, I do, I do. Sometimes we use a, a, what we call a KT medical glove. Um, this particular KT glove has on darts on the back to facilitate that lymph flow in the right direction. Um, you can get gloves to use are good when they have a lot of swelling between the knuckles and finger wraps can't really get in there. Um, and you can put the glove on and then do proceed from the hand bandage on up to the arm. Um, but just for the sake of showing finger wraps and the fun that can come, I'll, I'll do that today. Um, all right, the first thing we normally would have someone do before they wrap is lotion. So Delaine, I'll put on her lotion on her arm while I get my other side.
the next thing we tend to do is um, put a stockinette. They come in various sizes, uh, 6 centimeter, 8, a 10, and a 12, depending on where you're wrapping and the size of the extremity. Um, so it's probably going to be a little big on them, but I just grabbed the 8. And we put that on all the way up just to give her a barrier so that the bandages aren't directly on her skin. I always tell people to cut that a little longer than needed, make a fist, um, because these can be washed and reused. So normally when we order supplies, they get a whole roll box of this. And if they wash and reuse it, that box will last them much longer. Okay, and then I pull that back. Right, so we're going to start with the fingers. And we're going to pretend that um, her swelling is pretty much just to this middle joint. She's not having any swelling in the distal part of the fingers. So spread your fingers apart. So I'm going to start on the hand. Come to the outside of the thumb. And I'm going to wrap kind of down from that middle joint around. Giving her a steady pressure, but not pulling so tight that I've cut her circulation off. Anchoring it around. Getting a good overlap. I try to stay out of the wrist just so I don't give her like a tourniquet effect so I keep it on the bottom of her hand. And then anything left over you could tuck in. One of the tricks we do, sometimes you get swelling that occurs between there and you can kind of see there's a little bit of gap there. So if you come up and wrap around just between the fingers and I'll show you. I'm going to tuck that in. We never tape that because it would uh, pull apart. So if I really wanted to get down in there, I'll take a second roll and just come around and almost make like just a V and pull it back. if I want to get that and then I could just cut it set it in there but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lightly lay this around normally I would stay out of the wrist but I'm just going to lay that around so it doesn't bunch up and I'm just going to tuck it under and pull that down so now she's got her fingers wrapped and the knuckles down okay because she doesn't have much swelling I won't use the foam, but I would start that kind of at her wrist. And this is just to keep the bandages from, you know, digging into her skin and rolling. We'll give her a little bit of padding. Um, most of the time, people get irritated in here. So sometimes we might do a little extra in the elbow crease as we're working up. We can use foam if we need to. But she'll appreciate not being so hot. So we take it up to the highest part of the arm, and again with this just being a cotton, we're just going to kind of tuck it under. Okay, we would use our smallest bandage, maybe, depending on how much swelling they have, depends on how many layers you use. If someone really had an edematous arm and a lot of swelling, I'd probably use the wrist hand bandage and maybe three arm layers going from the, the wrist to the axilla. If someone were really mild, I'm probably going to use a minimum, you know, the minimum of three layers, being the wrist hand and then two. So um, I'm going to start at the wrist. I'm going to have you spread your fingers out. 
and we're going to work down towards the thumb on pinky, spread it out <laughs> to the base of the thumb. Keep it spread out, and the reason I have it spread out is so that when she does bring her hands back together, um, she's not stuck in a princess way. Because she doesn't really have swelling, I'm not going to pull this super hard because she won't be very happy. And then once we finish that, we just bring this up the arm um, as high as you can. You don't want to keep wrapping in the wrist or you'll create a tourniquet. So. Normally it's a wrist hand bandage. In her case, it's now become part of her arm. <laughs> For most people, you won't get that much out of their wrist hand bandage. <laughs> and then we always tape. We tend not to use the, um, the little sticky tabs. Um, being that she's so small, this is I probably could truly use another six, but I'm going to go with an eight just to kind of show you. We start at the wrist. And I overlap, you should always try to finish with the right amount of material here. Um, so I'm going to probably overlap this a little more than normal because she's very tiny. <laughs> I kind of pull compression on each side as I'm wrapping around. Um, obviously, if someone had more swelling, I would obviously be given much more pressure. Um, Getting the right height and getting it to land where you need to comes with practice. <laughs> That's perfect. Uh huh. <laughs> See? Um, and then I'm going to tape this. Now, technically, she actually has two layers from here to here, but she only has the one layer there, which won't do her much good. So we would actually add one more on top of that. Sometimes you can take the extra now and roll it down just to make it neat things in place. And I would take another and I would, again would start down at the wrist. Um, does it feel really tight? It probably does because she has... You know, um, I mean, it's you know, yeah. I don't. I think I knew sort of what. Obviously, I know what to expect. So, <laughs> and I'm not really pulling yeah. her like a typical right. lymphedema patient, or she'd probably turn blue. <laughs> I mean, it's stiff, but it's not like uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And then we, again, we just take everything in place. It's always helpful to pre tear your tape and have it stuck to something, then you can just reach up and stick a piece on there versus having to stop and hold tear. Um, but she should be able to, you know, bend her arm, might like be a little tight, um, be able to reach her mouth. She, you know, we have people leave here and drive. Um, she can make a fist and open, move her wrist. Um, when you're checking, you should always have a greater pressure here you know, and go up and feel that it's a little less up here. So it should feel tighter and less tight as you're at the top. Um, if you overlap the same amount all the way up the arm and you pull with the uh, same amount of pressure as you go around, you will automatically make it tighter here and less compressed here by the law of Laplace, which with your conical shape, you know, smaller here will be tighter, less here. Um, another way of achieving your, your pressures um, your gradient pressure is she technically has three layers of bandages here to here. So she automatically has greater pressure distally than proximally. Um, if patients aren't getting high enough up the arm when they self-wrap, it's usually because they overlap too much. Um, if they get to the top and have a lot left over, they have a tendency to want to just keep wrapping. If you make this part too tight, then you push all your fluid back downward. So a lot of times they have, you know, you just instruct them to start over. Um, so if they don't get high enough, they need to not overlap so much and vice versa. If they get up there with a lot left over, they need to overlap more. Um, that amount of overlap changes based on fluid reduction. So you might start off at a 50% overlap of the bandages, but if their swelling goes down, you might have to overlap more than 50%. So just kind of learning to do that. 